The world of marketing has certainly changed over the past two decades. With the tremendous growth of technology, the internet is an essential part of our lives as well as businesses. Nowadays, if your business is not found online, you are limiting your business potential by significant numbers and it could possibly grow tenfold just by advertising online. That's digital marketing. The use of digital mediums to promote and reach potential customers online. Basically, any ads you see through your device is digital marketing. So what's the difference between digital marketing and traditional marketing? Traditional marketing is basically everything not online, such as print, billboards, broadcasts, phone, and physical mail. A career in digital marketing is a very promising career, as many tech-savvy strategist marketers are widely sought out by companies all across the spectrum. Of course, digital marketers don't only work for others, some choose to work for themselves, such as today's video guest, Nelson Lamb. All right, so I was gonna give Nelson an intro, but I think he can introduce himself. Let's go. Hey, so I am Nelson and I am a freelance digital marketer. So I do affiliate marketing. So that means I promote other people's products and in exchange, I receive commission for it. So I've been doing digital marketing online for about about to hit my fourth year. I decided to start this online marketing journey because I didn't feel like school was right for me. You know, school isn't for everyone. I was never good at math. And when I got into university, uh, I had to take these uh, prereqs, uh, pre-calc and calculus, and I I couldn't pass. I couldn't pass pre-calc, so I couldn't take calculus. And then I couldn't take my major classes. And I just decided one day I'm gonna take a break from this. And instead of just like learning the traditional marketing, uh, I found a lot of online courses. That's actually how I got started. So I found a lot of online courses and I just, I found a mentor and I've just been following exactly what my mentor has been telling me. And now I am doing my own thing. So what or who inspired you to begin freelance digital marketing? I saw a lot of, I guess you would call them influencers, just people using their, just people monetizing their Instagram accounts to make money online. And I found a, a, a success oriented meme account that, uh, you know, the accounts that have a lot of uh, motivational quotes on it. Uh, I saw this post that was introducing me to this new online marketing niche. I just decided to click on their bio one day. I guess I got sold. Uh, I, I went through their sales funnel and I saw a video presentation. It was really honest compared to a lot of others. Uh, this account was a millionaire mentor, Jason Stone. And I actually had the opportunity to fly to a seminar that he was a part of. And I got to meet him in person, shake his hand and see his mentor. I got to saw a lot of influential people. And how was that experience for you? Going to see your mentor, going... You know, that was when it became real. We were in a Facebook group and there was a lot of beginners and experts together. They, uh, we had an active community. Everyone's asking questions, answering questions. Like you saw what they did firsthand. I saw what they did. I got to listen to their story firsthand. Uh, I, I had some friends uh, got on the stage and they were telling their story to... Uh, I think it was like 500 people we had in the seminar. A lot of knowledge was shared in that seminar in Hawaii. Is there a specific field of digital marketing you're in? The specific type of online marketing that I'm in is affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is a relationship between an affiliate and a company. And the company would have a product that uh, the company wants to put outside into the market. One of the ways to put that product out in the market would be leveraging affiliates because affiliates uh, today, they are their influencers today and they have a whole bunch of following on their Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. That would be a very effective way to put their product out into the market. So I'm currently uh, partnered with a company that does online marketing courses. So I sell courses online and I run Facebook ads to these courses. Uh, I, I create my own sales funnels. I, I try to put my face in front of the the company and brand right. myself with the company instead of just branding the company right because people people trust people people join people and people don't join companies if you establish yourself as a very trustworthy person then your audience will trust you right. and take your word for it and they will buy that product it's because you're selling the product and they trust you, you so be genuine word. yep exactly 
Can you share a step-by-step -step process of one of your marketing campaigns? What do you do from the moment you gain a customer's attention until the point where they actually buy your product? I I'll start from beginning um, when I when I find a company. Let's say, uh, let's say I am on ClickBank. So I I find a company that I want to partner up with. Usually, they will ha already have preset promotional content that you can leverage to put onto your blog or put onto your social media or whatever you can use the content okay it's already branded i take those content and i put it on my blog and i, I put it on a, a system called a sales funnel which is a three page system that a customer go through following the item model so attention interest desire and action every prospect needs to go through these four steps in order to become a customer so going back i partner up with the company i take their content and then I put that into my sales funnel. I run Facebook ads to it or Instagram ads or any, any type of ads, okay? Once they click on my ad, that's when I got their attention. So my next step would be to pique their interest. I have a headline on the first page that they click on. Whatever they came here for, it has to correspond with the headline. And under the headline, I will have a short video with my face, me explaining about uh, if you want to get, if you want to learn more, click on the next step, but you don't tell them everything in that first page, because if you tell them everything, then they're not interested anymore because they already got what they got. They already got what they came here for. So you don't want to give everything on the first page. You want to hold their interest a little longer. What was one of your worst failures and how would you handle it differently now if you were in a similar situation? <laughs> oh my God, my worst failure. Mm. This is um, like an anomaly, but uh, I'll mention it anyway. Before I was with this company, I was with another company, and I well, did. What was that company's name? The the other company's name is Digital Marketing. It's labeled an MLM now, uh, but it, it basically it got it got targeted by the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, and they deemed they deemed the operations uh, unethical, saying how the company was uh, taking advantage of the lower tier people, and they, right. they're they're saying that the top the top people are getting the most amount of money and so basically it shut down the whole company shut down and i say that was one of my worst failures because i didn't do enough research behind it before and you got into it uh, yes uh before i got into it because uh the the main the main thing that got them in trouble is because they had a claim uh their claim was like six figures in 90 days and that is possible i've seen it i know people who did six figure in 90 days but uh they were using that slogan and they were blasting it in front of the average joe not everyone is as hard working and like a go-getter you know the, there's the, the 80 20 rule one person obviously if you're doing affiliate marketing this is your own business you are responsible for it i guess he didn't follow the rules uh, i don't know this person but this person on on facebook he said that uh they scammed me this and that and shut down and if i just did a little bit more research on which company to partner up with maybe this wouldn't have happened yeah you wouldn't have lost a lot of time I, I wouldn't have lost a lot of time because i did spend a lot of time and money to build this whole this whole business right. revolving this product but i wouldn't say it's a complete failure because obviously i learned from it of course always and, always and after that i started to look into i guess what the FTC looks for and like just a lot of regulations, you know, like just what, to see what if not to do, what not to do. And just to see if the company that you do partner up with is complying with these regulations, because if it's not, it's going, it's going to hit you. What characteristic of yours do you think influences people the most to trust and do business with you? I see a lot of competitors, um, again, selling people this fake dream standing in front of flashy cars and just, you know, having stacks of money, just like tricking people into thinking that it's easy. Obviously, I know it's not easy and they know it's not easy, but they are making it seem like if you join them, you would have all this wealth and all this happiness, which is not true. I don't filter much of the things that I do. Uh, I'm not going to sell anybody a fake dream because i know it's hard before someone decides to work with me i let them know this is going to be the plan this is going to be hard 
okay and it's going to take some time you know people crave for genuinity is that the word i don't know yeah i think, yeah, I think it i don't know people like it when you're real i think one of the best ways to show people you're genuine and you're real is now that we have youtube you can document your beginnings until your end so people you know the videos will always be there it, it's it's always going to be there people can always go back to to you know the first video to see if you were lying or not so what's your take on personas see i that's a that's a pretty tough question because i know people who are really genuine and people gravitate towards that genuineness and then there are people who throw in personas to like to keep the energy up because after all people watch it to to pass time or, or gain to, knowledge. to gain knowledge and if you can't convey your energy to the viewer you know that's not a really effective video and especially if you're trying to sell if you can't transfer your certainty to the viewer right they're not going to trust you obviously you know your limits you know i think i think it's mostly what you're trying to say as long as you're not saying anything that's the, that's yeah. not true that you don't firmly believe in then i think that's okay having a persona for youtube videos but it just makes sure that whatever you're saying is genuine and from the heart just don't lie right you know obviously people have emotions sometimes you're recording a video you're really hyper sometimes you're recording it at night and you're not that hyper mm -hmm. but who, which which one is the real you you know they're both you that's what stay i would genuine, say stay genuine. you have to stay genuine and don't act like someone you're not was there a certain marketing campaign that you were very proud of and that you found a lot of success in? My first high ticket sale. So it was one of uh, my earlier Facebook ads. It was like a basic image and I, I got a customer off of that. And that was the first time somebody joined my team. I got my email and it said that I just got like 540 something dollars. And, and I wasn't even working at that time when I received my email. I, I think I was like watching a movie and my, my phone rings and it said, uh, I've closed this deal. Nice. And I was like, oh, okay, we can go somewhere with this. And then that really puts, it really keeps the ball going. Obviously you can run campaigns and make little fun end sales for like, I don't know, like $20, $50, but you know, how many front end sale do you have to make for it to be sustainable? Right. So the money's in the back end, and that's that's my, the first time I got my back end sale. I took that money, I put it back into the system, and the ball's been rolling since. What was one of your least successful marketing campaigns? What didn't work for you? Inside affiliate marketing and the the making money online niche, we have something called solo ads. Mm -hmm. And what solo ads are is basically you have me, the buyer, and the seller. So let's say you are the solo ad seller. You have a giant email list again remember we said the email list is a giant database a database of potential customers okay mm -hmm. i would pay you to send an email to your million of people list let's okay let's not million let's say you have a hundred thousand people in your list right you can target a hundred thousand people you can send one email it will blast to these hundred thousand people mm -hmm. most of the time they they come out not profitable there was a time i uh, i placed an order for like i don't know like a thousand a thousand dollars and it turned out that their email list was a dead list and this happens pretty frequent uh if you're not careful with who you do business with so a dead list obviously it's just people who are unresponsive there are bots there are fake emails in that list so obviously like you say you have a hundred thousand people in there but how many of those 100,000 are real people who are motivated to buy? I don't know because that's not my list. I just have to trust you. How does someone realize if this company is good enough to work with? Like what are some clues? My suggestion would be stay away from solo ads and just get good at Facebook ads. Inside the Facebook ads uh, manager, you are responsible for creating your own ad creative. You're responsible for your own sales copy your own sales video basically everything mm -hmm. facebook is only there to bring people to your ad how effective your ad is it's totally up to you like you might want to if you if you are fully responsible for your entire ad creative then you would know you can split test you can split test let's say uh you want to have different headlines you you put both of these ads out and you you could 
you can have enough data to know which headline is working better, which one has more clicks, which one has more audience retention. And let's say uh, you can also test out different sales videos. Let's say, what if your sales video wasn't as captivating or it wasn't as engaging? Right. So with Facebook ads and Instagram ads, you have, and YouTube ads, you have more control over the effectiveness of your own marketing campaign compared to the solo ads. Um, you don't really have that much control and it usually doesn't work the way you want it to. So I would say get good at Facebook ads because Facebook ad is taking over the world. Solo ads out, Facebook ads in. Is there a certain milestone that you're very proud of? How far have you come that you can look back and say like, I came a long way? Looking back at my old website or looking back at my old ebook. When, when I first started like four years ago, obviously it wasn't at the level that I wanted to be today. I, I've learned that you can't do everything by yourself. You have to, you know, it's okay to leverage other people expertise because I'm not a graphics designer. I don't know how to make highly engaging ad creatives or like edit or like design my book cover or, you know, just a lot of these skills or like editing videos or some, you know, just outsourcing. I guess, uh, looking back at my work, I, uh, back then I tried to do everything myself. It was very sloppy and it didn't get as, as much result as I wanted to because now looking back with a new fresh pair of eyes, my work looked really sloppy. I, I learned more about um, buyer psychology and like what people look for and like how short people's attention spans are and like just a lot of things that I didn't know back then. Yeah, so there was a lot of self growth. There was a lot of self growth and I redid my entire ebook, my lead magnet, and I had designers and editors and like proofreaders all come together to help me put this project together and I'm pretty proud of it. I'm pretty proud of the, the journey. The journey. So that's always the most important thing. It's not it's always about the money. It's not about the money. Yes, obviously money is good, but it, it feels a lot better when someone comes up and say, hey, you've come a long way. You know, mm -hmm. like those comments, like people leaving comments like, hey, I see videos of you three years ago and videos of you now, like the production value is completely different. And I see that like the value that you are giving out is completely different. Like wow. that worth more than money. Are there any techniques that you are currently implementing to scale your business? Techniques? I don't know about techniques, but uh, some practices that I've been applying to my everyday life is uh, I bought a, I bought two whiteboards so I could write down my daily tasks. So every day I wake up, I can look at the board and I can see what I have to do. Uh, it gets, it just kind of keeps me productive when I see my goals on the whiteboard compared to like having it on my phone or so, even writing it at all. So, so it's like, it's like a daily reminder of stuff you have to do. Yes. Goal setting and following through that uh, that would help you scale your business a lot. If there was one skill that you believe any digital marketer should have developed or be developing right now, what would that skill be? I would say being in front of camera, video. It's the, it's the most engaging form of content. And if you are camera shy, it's going to be pretty hard for you to put yourself out into the internet because that's where the world is heading towards right now. Right. Everything is being digital. And the, how you digitalize yourself is recording a video and throwing it out in the platform. That video is going to work for you 24 seven. And if you master being in front of camera and not being camera shy, it's going to scale your brand a lot. It's going to increase your reach and people are going to know you more and people are going to trust you more. And of course, if the more people trust you, the more people will want to do business with you. Yeah, and just overall, just have more connections and, and people by your side. You need to be confidence? confident in what you're saying. Yes. All right, bonus question. Oh, we're, we're done already? Okay. Do you speak Spanish? Yes. All right, there you guys have it. He yes. speaks Spanish. Si, sí. <laughs> sí. soy español. Soy <laughs> habla español. No, you, you completely yeah. messed that up. Whoever speaks Spanish, let, put that in the comment below. What do you mean? Let him know Soy what habla español. Soy is I am. Really? Yeah. Oh. I speak is like hablo. Yeah, soy hablo español. No, you don't say soy. 
Just say as I'm, me. Just say I'm low. I'm low. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But let me know I if I'm right. So. Let me know if I'm right. All right, guys. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. The camera's about to die. Uh, so Nelson, is there any last piece of advice that you have for all the digital marketers out there watching this video right now? What would you say to them? Check out my book. If you want to get into digital marketing, know that it's not going to be a walk in the park, okay? It's going to look like it's easy, right? Uh, you sell something and you get commission, you get money, ha ha. It's, but it's not that easy. You're gonna have to develop a lot of skills. What I recommend is YouTube is a great platform. You uh, subscribe to a whole bunch of self self help channels, and you know anything you have questions about, you can always find the answer on YouTube. There are people making videos teaching about basically anything. You can learn anything on YouTube, and that's mostly how I learned everything I know through YouTube. So if you go in there with an open mind, not thinking that everyone's here for your money, uh, I think you're going to receive a lot of value from what you search. In case you haven't checked out my ebook, uh, The Ultimate Guide to Becoming a Freelance Digital Marketer. In this ebook, we're going to target three key elements to discovering how you can earn high ticket commission selling other people's products. So if you are interested in that, uh, the link is in the description. You're going to enter my sales funnel. You can see the inside of how I sell and my selling process, and it's going to be fun. So click the link in the description and I'm going to email you this book and let's start a conversation. All right, guys. So make sure you guys check out Nelson's book down below. It's a very short read. It's only 30 pages. Um, the information was phenomenal. Uh, there was a lot of stuff I learned that I never knew about, or it was just like explained into much more detail. If you guys want to reach out to Nelson, um, I will put all his links in the description box yes, below. Follow me. Uh, his Instagram will be right here. If you guys want to reach out to me, my stuff. If you get, if you guys want to reach out to me, my links will be in the description box. Yeah, I'll cut it. Hey, follow him. <laughs> follow him his links will be in the description below all right guys thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one